America is facing the worst drug crisis we've ever seen, with 46 million Americans suffering from substance use disorder and more than 107,000 Americans dying from drug overdose or accidental poisonings a year. These are not just members, but represent numbers, but represent devastating losses to families and communities, with an American dying every five minutes of every hour of every day. This is an unacceptable to me, and it is unacceptable to the president. This crisis does more than cause tragic and preventable deaths. It is tearing the very fabric of our nation. It presents a direct and surging threat to public health, as well as our national security and economic prosperity. As a practicing physician, I've had a front row seat to the evolution of this epidemic. As you've seen in your own states, it cuts across every geographic, demographic, and economic boundary. The majority of illicit drugs harming Americans are produced outside of the United States. Criminal elements, mostly in the People's Republic of China, ship precursor chemicals to Mexico where they're used to produce illicit fentanyl. Illicit fentanyl has infiltrated the entire drug supply, including cocaine and meth. Finally, somewhere in America today, a teenager will find illicit drugs simply by opening a social media app on their phone. This is an era of new drug trafficking, a new era of drug trafficking, and it requires new era of drug policy. President Biden's strategy is tackling this novel threat head on. We're addressing two key drivers of the epidemic, untreated addiction and the drug trafficking profits that fuel it. Let me be perfectly clear. Addiction is a disease and that must be treated, and drug trafficking is a crime that must be prosecuted. If it remains easy to get illicit drugs in America than it is to treatment, we will never end this crisis. And that's why in his State of the Union address, President Biden launched a major surge to stop illicit fentanyl production, trafficking, and distribution at every choke point, including holding accountable the big tech companies that allow the sale of illegal drugs on their platforms. He also called for increasing the number of first responders and other professionals who can respond to mental health and substance use challenges. Thanks to the hard work of our law enforcement officers, we're seizing record amounts of illicit fentanyl and other drugs, and domestic seizures alone denied drug traffickers nearly $9 billion in profits last year. I want to emphasize that while seizures and arrests are critically important, this problem does not begin or end at the United States border. That's why we're working closely with our international partners, especially Mexico, Colombia, India, Canada, and others. The bilateral relationship between the United States and the PRC is complex and characterized by competition, yet there are areas in which we can cooperate and counter narcotics as one. We're urging the PRC to join us in this action, but rather than demonstrate global leadership by engaging in efforts to rein in illicit precursor production and trafficking, an issue where PRC plays an outsized role the PRC is instead choosing to not engage. Now, I want to be clear. A nation that seeks to demonstrate global leadership must act as a global leader on global issues. Where security, prosperity, and lives around the world are at stake, there is no excuse for inaction. And the United States will continue to lead in the global coalition against illicit fentanyl with or without the PRC. At last month's North America Leaders Summit in Mexico City, for instance, President Biden made illicit fentanyl a main topic of conversation. He pressed President Lopez Obrador to act with a shared sense of responsibility towards the threat of drug trafficking and its associated criminality. And all of us here will work with Mexico to drive results. And at home, President Biden has led public health efforts to tackle this epidemic as well. We're expanding access to naloxone and treatment, focusing on evidence-based prevention and supporting people in recovery. Critically, we've worked closely with Republicans and Democrats in Congress to remove barriers to treatment for millions of Americans. We'll save lives as we implement this historic legislation in partnership with DEA and HHS. We're showing the country we can what we can accomplish when we work together. As the CDC just announced, we have now seen six straight months of reports where overdose numbers have decreased or been flat. That's around 3,000 people who haven't died and instead are at the dinner table at each night. The opioid crisis is not a red state problem or a blue state problem. This is America's problem. And the President knows, just all of, as all of you know, that it will take all of us working together to solve it. All of us. 
This is the time to put politics aside and make life better for American people. To this end, my request to you and to Congress at large is to fully fund President Biden's drug control budget, which will be released soon. And I look forward to working with Congress to accomplish our shared goals to save American lives and keep our communities healthy and safe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.